Well, it's been a lot of fun, but I think I need to get this Chimera conversion weathered up and finished. <laughs> Hey, I'm John. Thanks for joining me for this video today. Well, I have been having a blast building this uh, Chimera conversion. And if you've not watched previous episodes, uh, the Chimera is a tank from the uh, an armored APC from the Warhammer universe. And normally it has tracks on the side. And uh, uh, it looks pretty cool that way. I've built one of those uh, before and quite enjoyed it. But this one is a resin conversion set that basically just replaces the tracks on the side with these resin uh, hull pieces and gives it a wheeled look. Now, the resin parts and this resin turret, it's a replacement turret, come from uh, a, an eBay store called Blood and Skull Industries. And there's going to be a link down below to them. And uh, I really recommend that you take a look at the stuff they offer. They have loads of conversion sets for Warhammer kits and you can come up with some really cool combinations so this one if I remember correctly is actually called the Aquarius uh, in their uh, nomenclature but I've been calling it a Chimera just because that's what most people know the model as but it's a fun conversion to do and it fits perfectly now the first step I'm going to do is to do a light dry brush of Strock and Green and if you notice that some of this has already been dry brushed you can tell that this is take two <laughs> but what this will do, and, and I'm not sure if it's Strachan Green or Strachan Green or Strachan Green, but it's a Citadel color. But what this will do is it will give it a little bit of that Games Workshop edge highlighted look, which is universe appropriate. But it's also going to start the chipping for me because I want this thing to be fairly heavily chipped. I don't want giant areas of chips but I want lots and lots and lots and lots of little chips. So this is going to actually begin the edge chipping on all of these wonderful bolts and edges and angles and everything like that. One quick note I forgot to mention at the very beginning in the previous episodes, you remember after I had painted this, uh, I had given it a gloss coat, put the decals on, left the gloss coat on to do the oil washes, before this video, I gave the model an acrylic satin coat, so it's no longer a gloss finish, but a satin finish. Now, I used the AK Interactive uh, satin varnish for this, but any satin varnish will work. I think weathering goes best over a satin or a matte varnish. I, I prefer satin, but uh, I gave it that clear coat, and everything's prepped for all of the stages to come. Now, to start I guess you'd say the chipping proper. I've wiped off most of the paint on this brush. I'm using the same one that I used for, uh, for the dry brushing. I've wiped off most of the paint, but not quite as much as I would for the dry brush. And what I'm going to do is just use the edge of this brush to go in and stipple in some surface chipping. Now these are going to be smaller chips uh, and, and I'm just building them up as I go, working some paint onto the bristles each time, and just giving the edges, you can go into the center of panels to add some of this in, and you want to rotate your brush around every now and then so you don't get a potato stamp look, but this will just add the first level of the surface chipping and things like that. And by using this same color, it just builds on that dry brushing step that I just did. And I'm still mid-process in this, but you can see how I'm building up the chips in different areas. Like here on the lower part, I'm really putting in a lot more of the chips because that's where stuff is going to get kicked up and rocks and dirt and stuff thrown up. Like along the front here, I did it very, very heavy because this is an area that's going to get a lot of damage so there's going to be other things going on here of course I'll be adding in streaking and dirt and grime and rust and things like that but this serves as a foundation for uh, all the later effects but that chipping uh, that I've just added in just helps set the tone for everything to come I've got all of the stippling chips um, <laughs> in my mind I think of it as chipling 
Um, I've got all the chipling in place. And uh, what I want to do now is use that same color, that struck and green. And I'm going to go in with a fairly pointy brush. And then I just want to paint in some scratches, some streaks of uh, chipping, you know, where maybe it's going through the the woods and a limb scrapes up against it and creates some kind of a scrape in the paint. You know, that would be represented by some kind of horizontal chipping. Um, if I wanted to do some vertical chipping, it could be where perhaps, a, you know, a crewman was dragging a piece of, uh, you know, an ammo can up the side of it to try and get it inside of it or, you know, something fell down from above. So it doesn't all have to be one direction. In fact, I think it makes it far more interesting if if you combine a variety of directions uh, to suggest just a lot of different things. For the next stage of chipping, I'm going to use a one-to-one -one mix of deck tan and German gray, both from Vallejo Model Color, and I'm going to thin those down with water. To apply it, I'm going to start off with my same stipple brush and focus on areas that already have some of the lighter chipping. Now, if it gets off of the green areas, the lighter green areas, that's fine because sometimes chips, when they happen, they go right through to the base layer, so it, it doesn't have to be perfectly precise over the green, but what that'll do is just suggest even deeper chips. After the chipling is complete, I'm going to go in and use a brush to just fill in a few areas that are easier to do with a brush for more precise application. And don't forget to add a few chips through your decals. For the next step, I'm going to use some of this Life Color Rust Dark Shadow. And what I want to do here is just introduce in some areas where I'm going to put some rust stains and things like that. So I'm just going to paint this in to the to the darker areas, just a few of them, not a lot of them. Now I'll switch to this Life Color Rust base color, and in those areas that I just painted some darker rust, I'll go in and just lightly stipple in this more orange color. To further sell the notion of rust, I'm going to use this Vallejo Light Rust Model Wash, and on those areas where I've applied rust, I'm just going to put in a little bit of it on each of those spots, and then I'm going to after I get it on there, I want to dip my brush in some water and just thin it out a bit and just wipe off some of that rust effect. All right, next I want to start adding some mud and earth effects. So I'm going to start off with this textured earth from Wilder. Now this stuff is a uh, an acrylic paste that has actual, uh, I guess, dirt in it, some kind of texture, and I want to apply it all up in the wheel wells. I want to get this well coated. Now I'm also going to apply some along the bottom here because of course this is going to get mud splashed up on it. And I'm going to make sure to go up into these these mud guards here because those two are going to collect mud. And I'm going to get it up oh, about halfway up the side there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some water on my brush. I'm going to partially clean it off, get it wet. I'm doing this obviously off camera in my little cup of water. And I'm just going to kind of dampen those edges to just blend it just a little bit. So there's not so much of a, a harsh line right there. That brought it up a little further, but that's okay because it's going to dry more transparent than it goes on. But that'll give me the basis for the steps that I'm going to do after this dries. And you can see that dries to a fairly muddy look there, and it's um, I think it's pretty cool looking. I want it to be a little darker, though. I don't want the mud to be that light. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and overpaint that with the Vallejo Model Wash European Dust. Now for this, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to paint this wash. I'm just going to just dab it on there very heavily. Now here along the side, what I'm going to do is just kind of like I did before, 
I'm going to paint that on there fairly heavily like that and once it's on there fairly well I dip my brush in water again and I'm just gonna kind of let that blend in just kind of you see how it's just running down the side there and I'm just gonna let that go and you can even get some on your brush that's loaded with water and just put a little more on like that just to sell the notion of mud Now, once that dries I can continue building up this color until I get it looking like however I want the mud to look remember those tires that I painted up in I think it was episode four well fixing to dirty them up I'm gonna go back in with the textured earth like I'd used in the wheel wells and on the sides of the model and I'm just gonna put that in here fairly heavily because of course if it's driving around in the mud these wheels are just gonna get absolutely muddy and yeah that's gonna cover up most of the work that I'd done before but that's okay because the work that I did <laughs> is still useful because if you're gonna have a model that's not gonna be this dirty or this weathered or anything like that then you know you still want your tires to look tireish so just something to keep in mind now I've got some water on my brush here I'm just gonna thin this down a little bit so that it'll keep that textured look but let a little bit of the colors of the tire shine through all right with the textured earth dry I'm gonna go back in with that brown Vallejo model wash and just stipple this on all around it I'm not flooding the surface but I'm getting enough on there that it will tint the the look of the mud to be consistent with the other parts of the model that I'm doing I didn't put any wash or anything in the treads yet. I'm going to wait till I get them on the model and then I'll just put the wash in where it's visible and not spend time putting wash where nobody will ever see if there's wash there or not. Now I want to reestablish some of the depth in here around this bolt detail. So I'm going to drop in some Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. I'm just going to put it in there kind of heavily, but what that'll do is it'll give the appearance of it one it'll shadow it so it looks like it's a little deeper give some depth to it but it'll also give some kind of a greasy appearance to the bolt so we want it to around the bolt detail so that it'll look like there's not only mud and dirt there but a little bit of grease going on all right here you can see the results of those various steps to put on the the mud and it looks appropriately muddy it's not completely covered in mud uh, but it definitely looks like it's been moving around in the dirt so I'm I'm pretty happy with that now a vehicle like this is gonna get dusty of course and dust is gonna be a little lighter so I'm gonna use this desert dust model wash from Vallejo to simulate that I've thinned it with water just a little bit not quite 50 50 and I just wick off most of it on my brush on that paper towel and I'm just gonna apply apply it in a stippling fashion over the surface of the model, the upturned surfaces. This is where I want it to appear that dust has collected. The other thing I'm going to do is on the the vertical surfaces, I'm just going to streak it down like that, but just build it up a little at a time. And this will simulate dust and rain marks and things like that. Now in a few areas, I want to make it look like things have been worn down to the point that there's so much wear there that it's actually polished the metal, the underlying material. And so I'm going to use this graphite stick is basically what it is. It's just a giant piece of lead. And in a few areas, I'm just going to edge those areas with this graphite. And what that'll do is when you look at it at certain angles, it'll just pick up the light and be really shiny and reflective and will make it appear as if it's something that has been worn to the point that all the rust has been removed, the paint has been removed, and it's been worn enough that it's polished it up. Now there's quite a few vision ports around the model, so I'm going to base paint these in Vallejo flat red. Now I'm going to go in with some Vallejo game color gory red that's thinned way down. And I'm just going to bring a diagonal line from front to back just like that. Now I'll need to do this in three or four very thin coats because this is 
essentially glaze consistency so I need to build that up just a little bit. I added just a little bit of imperial blue from Vallejo game color to that darker red color and I'm going to put this in just up in the corner of the darker red area and just at the edge of that darkest corner I'm going to touch in some Vallejo cold white What I want to do now is add some just surface stainings to represent uh, things like spilled fuel, spilled oil, spilled coffee, um, uh, just just stains and things that are darker in nature, not necessarily environmental based, but uh, something more man-made. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can do this with oils. You can do this with enamels. I'm just going to use Agrax Earthshade. Um, it dries quick and it looks pretty good and of course you could use more colors than this and I, I may uh, put in some known oil here and there and maybe even some Reichland flesh shade which is kind of a red color but all I'm going to do is just get most of it off of the brush and just go in and in a few places just stipple in some small stains like that and one of the things you can do is put a little more on and then drop your brush into some water and just blob a little water on there wick the brush off and just work that around what it'll do is it'll dry with a little bit of an edge around it a tide mark which leaves in my opinion an interesting stain um, because there are real world stains of course that that do that. And right, I've got a few stains painted on and if you look right there you can see the little tide marks that were left. That's what I was going for. Right back in episode one I talked eloquently of how I could later just pop these in and it would be real easy. So let's live on camera see. Hey what do you know? There we go. Easy enough. Now anywhere that I'm going to be gluing plastic to resin or resin to resin, I'll of course use super glue. Gluing stumpy in is going to be um, plastic to resin. The tires of course will be resin to resin. Uh, for that what I'll do is make sure that I've cleaned off the two mating surfaces so that it's down to uh, the resin or the plastic. One final step will be to go in and on those exposed areas of the tires had some dirt effects and I'll just go in and thin it down a bit clean off some of it so that some of the tire shows through okay here's a moment that I call one of those serendipitous moments when you're building your models and you think I wonder what happens if I try this and I did this on the other side I got some of this textured earth and I just started flicking it on like that and oh my goodness that just little bit of mud splat like that just using the, the product with the same color that it comes out of the bottle so it's slightly different from the rest of the mud oh my goodness I like the way that looks sometimes when you're building your models if you just try something to see, hey, I wonder what happens if I do this, you can find some really cool little effects. Well, I think I'm literally ready to call this guy done and dusted. Man, this has been a fun project. Um, if you've not already done so, uh, be sure and check out Blood and Skull Industry LLC. They're the, the folks who did the resin conversion, uh, these sides and the wheels and this turret. Uh, for this Chimera conversion and uh, they actually call it in, in their nomenclature on their site this is called the Aquarius uh, I haven't really used that name very much in the videos simply because most people will know what a Chimera is if you're familiar with 40k so I just kind of stuck to calling it a Chimera but in uh, you know, on their store it's, it's the Aquarius which is a, a cool name for this but man this has been a fun project it's gone a few more episodes than uh, my normal uh, series of videos have but I hope those kind of deep dives into a few of the other 
aspects of this build have been helpful for you. And uh, if nothing else, maybe they've been entertaining. Thank you so much for watching this video, and uh, I would uh, be most grateful if you would give it a like, uh, hit the thumbs up, and of course, subscribe down somewhere over here, and uh, hit the little bell icon so you'll know that I have, uh, when I have new videos out. Also, if you would uh, please drop a comment down below. Adding comments and giving likes and things like that really helped me grow the channel, uh, which I'm something I'm trying to do, and uh, I would be most grateful if you would do that. There's also links down below to my social media if you want to connect with me there. And there is a link to Patreon. Uh, that's how I, I support my modeling work. Um, it's a, a, a way that I can do this without it affecting our uh, family income otherwise uh, because I just wouldn't be able to afford it if it weren't for Patreon. So uh, check that out. And if you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much uh, for, for helping me uh, you're such a blessing to me and my family, and I am so very grateful for the support and encouragement that you provide uh, in that way. And with all that being said, I'll leave you with one final thought. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.